Siren over here and I'm back again with another video. With Dragonflight's release date announced and the Winds of Wisdom XP buff being reintroduced on the 4th and 5th of October for the US and EU respectively, I thought I'd look into what would be needed to take advantage of the Race to World first, especially with the implementation of region-wide materials being accessible on the auction house. Let's imagine you're like most goblins and you've got a bit of spare time on your hand ahead of the expansion release on the 28th of November and you fancy a challenge, setting up on a high population server. But then, maybe that's not enough of a challenge for you. Let's imagine you want to be on one of the best or the best of the best servers, a server that contains one of the top 100 cutting edge gills from Sepulchre of the first ones. So let's say that you're just bored enough that you want to create a fully self-sufficient, profession-dominating crafting army and set up home on a cutting edge server. How would you go about doing this? In today's video, I want to cover why set up on a cutting edge server, what servers have the most cutting edge guilds, what professions are now region-wide and which professions are not, which profession racials are still important, and what does the ideal craft and profession army look like by faction and race? Before we get into the ins and outs of making a race to world first crafting army, can I just ask you that you please like this video and subscribe to the channel using the buttons below please. Every sub helps, thank you. So why set up on a cutting edge server? Well, simply, deep pockets are one of the main reasons. Most cutting edge guilds have got feeders already, but that's not to say that they don't need more. In past expansions, these guilds would have needed an abundance of flasks, potions, enchants, etc. But this is wiped out now with the region-wide auction house. That change has made this become the Wild West and also something that you can do from your lowly little server. You know, that's the equivalent of working from home. However, the benefit now of being on a cutting edge server is that the other professions that are still server locked have now become very lucrative, at least in the first month or so of an expansion release. So which servers have got the most cutting edge guilds? Well, first off, you're going to have to look at which servers are home to the most successful raiding guilds in the world. So for ease, I've looked at English speaking servers in the EU and servers in the US. I have excluded Oceanic servers for ease, sorry guys. I've also looked at factions. Even though raiding will become cross-faction, it doesn't mean that trade and crafted goods will be. Horde will continue to be the faction of choice, so what does that look like? In the US, there are 15 servers with Horde Cutting Edge Guilds and 3 servers that house 51% of these Cutting Edge Horde Guilds. These were Illidan with 15 Guilds, Area 52 with 14 Guilds, and Tychondrius with 7 Guilds, all of which are notorious for being some of the hardest servers to dominate. In the EU, that was a slightly smaller number for Horde Cutting Edge Guilds with 12 servers, but again 3 clear places to be. Kazakh had 23 Guilds, Twist and Nether with 16 gills, and Taran Mill with 15 gills. When it comes to Alliance, it's a sad state of affairs, especially since I play Alliance. In the US, there were 6 servers with Alliance Cutting Edge gills, and 2 servers that held 60% of these Cutting Edge Alliance gills. These were Sargaris with 4 gills, and Stormrange with 2 gills. These are again equally difficult servers to dominate. In the EU, there was even less for Alliance Cutting Edge Guilds, with only four servers being the place to be. However, two servers claimed 73% of the Cutting Edge Guilds, Silver Moon with five guilds, and Ravencrest with three guilds. So now that we know which servers are the most lucrative, what professions are now region-wide and which are not? With the implementation of that region-wide auction house, the following professions are classed as region-wide. And I'm excluding things like BOE creations like mounts, dark moon cards, etc. This is purely due to them producing items that can be sold across multiple regions. You've got alchemy with potions and flasks, etc. Inscription with glyphs. You've got enchanting. You've got jewel crafting, which is the gems part of the jewel crafting profession. Herbalism, mining, skinning, and fishing. That means that the following professions are still very much sought after at a server level. You've got blacksmithing, engineering, leatherworking, tailoring, and cooking. Now, I know that this looks like a so what list of professions, but with the massive overhaul that professions are receiving in Dragonflight, as well as the implementation of work orders, these professions will be very lucrative in the first several weeks of the expansion. 
So what this means is profession racials are still going to be important. And why is that? Going into a new server means that you have to be aware of profession racials to maximise the benefit of each profession. If you start up on a new server with fresh characters, then this is equally as important. If you're not sure what I mean by profession racials, I'm referring to the benefits that certain races in World of Warcraft have. For example, goblins have got a plus 5 increase in the alchemy skill, or high mountain tauren have got a plus 5 increase in the mining skill. This means you can finish the profession a little bit quicker and receive the benefit. It also means that when you're looking at creating a world first crafting army, then you need to min-max your professions to tie in with racial benefits so that you're getting the most out of it. I mentioned a plus 5 increase in professions and not a plus 15 that many are used to, and this is because they were nerfed last week in the Dragonfly beta, so the current racials are as follows. You've got Goblins, which have got a plus 5 increase in Alchemy. You've got Dwarf, which has a plus 5 increase in Archaeology. You've got Dark Iron Dwarf, which is plus 5 in Blacksmithing. Pandarans, which is plus 5 in Cooking. The Blood Elves, which is plus 5 in Enchanting. Gnomes have a plus 5 in Engineering. Torrens have a plus 5 in Herbalism. Nightborn have got a plus 5 in Inscription. Draenei have got a plus 5 in Jewel Crafting. High Mountain Torrens have got a plus 5 in the Mining Profession. And Wargans have got a plus 5 in the Skinning Profession. So a nice little varied mix, but I must stress here that the outlier is Kul Tyran, which for the Alliance receives a plus 5 increase across all professions. So what does the ideal crafting profession army look like by faction and race? Based on professions and the complementary nature of the second profession, you should be setting up at least 8 characters. This is because the second profession is generally a gathering profession that can help keep costs down, generate gold, generate materials, and also provide a passive income when levelling the character in the first few weeks of Dragonflight. However, if you want the light version, then 4 characters will allow you to cover all of the crafting professions without the gathering professions. Ideally, if you're going to level, pick dungeon orientated classes, so tanks and healers, so that you're not hindered by the DPS queue to maximise that levelling experience if you do plan on levelling in dungeons ahead of the launch of Dragonflight. It's key that you make this decision now. You also have to remember here that there is no right answer, and I might also remind you that we are crafting a crafting army, not a best in slot or a meta army. Some of my suggestions will not benefit the character in any way, but are simply recommendations to make gold from a complementary bonus and professions perspective. When it comes to a fully self-sufficient crafting army, it does depend on the faction. So for a fully horde self-sufficient team, I would recommend alchemy and herbalism as the first two professions, and that would be a goblin. You've got blacksmithing and mining as profession one and two, and that would be a high mountain tauren. Enchanting with either tailoring or leatherworking for a blood elf. You would also have engineering and mining as profession 1 and 2 with a high mountain tauren. Inscription and herbalism with a nightborn. You would have jewel crafting and mining with a high mountain tauren. Leatherworking and skinning can be any character because there's no racial buffs for that. And then lastly we've got tailoring with either enchanting or skinning for a blood elf as well. Now, if you're not interested in that for the light version, for Professions 1 and 2, I would recommend Alchemy and Leatherworking on a Goblin, Enchanting and Tailoring on a Blood Elf, Engineering and Blacksmithing, that can be anything, and an Inscription and Jewel Crafter on a Nightborn. When it comes to the Alliance, there is a little bit more wiggle room though. For Profession 1 and 2, I would recommend Alchemy and Herbalism and just have a cool Turin. I would then say blacksmithing and mining for profession 1 and 2 on a dark iron dwarf or a light forge drain eye to make the most of blacksmithing. You have enchanting and either tailoring or leatherworking again on a cool turin. For engineering I'd recommend mining. For engineering I would recommend mining on a gnome. For inscription I'd have herbalism as a secondary profession on a cool turin. Um, jewel crafting and mining for a drain eye, leatherworking and skinning go hand in hand on a wargan, and tailoring or enchanting and skinning as a secondary profession again on a wargan. For the light version, for the light version, I'd recommend the following profession one and two: alchemy and leatherworking on a cool terrain, enchanting and tailoring on a cool terrain, engineering and blacksmithing on a gnome, and inscription and jewel crafting on a drain eye. Each of these setups will allow you to cover all professions and to compete in taking a slice of the pie when the expansion launches. 
So make sure you've taken the week off for the launch and power through each character for a few levels before moving to another to maximize the professions. And that's it. A video on how I would approach setting up a race to world first crafting army in Dragonflight. Please let me know if I missed anything in the comment section below. Hopefully you found this useful and if you did, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. But in the meantime, take care, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.